Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended. Um, we embrace our webinar ness <laughs> Um, and we cover a variety of things here. Anything um, that may be um, of interest to libraries, um, librarians, um, many library activities and topics we are happy to have on the show. Uh, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, so you can join us on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time when we um, do these, uh, the show live. Um, or if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, you can always go to our website and see all of our recordings of all of our previous shows are all available there as well, um, free and available to anyone to watch. And we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, uh, interviews, sometimes many training sessions. As I said, anything library related, um, we want to have it on the show. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff, of course, do presentations sometimes, but we also bring on uh, guest speakers often, and that's what we have this morning. On the line with us uh, today is Maurice Coleman. Hi, Mo. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi, Hi, everyone out there. Hello. And Maurice is, he's a bunch of things. He is the host of T is for... <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> his, yes, yes. He is the host of T is for Training, which is a podcast done um, every other Friday, I believe it is. Yep. Every other Friday um, at 2 p.m. In the afternoon. Yep. yep. Um, he's on the ALA Learning Roundtable. Um, I, back I am the program chairperson for the ALA Learning Roundtable. Mm -hmm. So if you go to ALA and hate the programs there, come find me. <laughs> we have and someone to complain to. Next year. <laughs> ah, yes. Present next year. I did see you were trying to recruit people to be there um, this year. Yep. To join in in some of the programming. Um, back in 2010, he was one of Library Journal's movers and shakers, of course. Um, and he is also as kind of a day job in addition to all that. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, you need more. Um, um, a technical trainer at the Hartford County Public Library in Maryland. So um, he's online with us from the East Coast. Um, I am. The rainy yeah. East Coast. Is it rainy? Oh, gosh, yes. It it's, is. It is rainy. Sorry. It's, it's drizzle, snorkel. <laughs> it's not quite the monsoons we've had over <gasps> the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. but, but it's it, not it pretty. certainly is reminiscent of it. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope you say dry. Um, and this morning I've asked um, Moe's on to talk about social media, which is a nice, yes. big, vague topic, of course, because, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but just how to do it well. You know, it's something that a lot of people have been doing for a long time, of course. Um, Facebook, Twitter, whatnot has been around for years. But there's right. lots of people brand new to it or wanting to uh, maybe revamp restart what they're doing. So um, I asked uh, Maurice to come on and give us his uh, tips and tips and tricks and thoughts on that. So I will yeah. just hand over to you to take it, take over and uh, tell us what you think. Okay. Of course. Well, thank you, everybody. And Chris, did you mention about questions during this whole little thing? Um, yeah, if you have any questions, oh, okay. um, yeah, if you do have any questions, you can ask at any time throughout the show. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, Feel free we'll, to interrupt me. Yeah, yeah, we'll take questions throughout. So, um, yes, if you'll um, type into the question section whenever you get the urge. Um, or if you have a microphone, like I said, let me know, and you have a microphone, I can unmute you, and you can um, ask your question that way. Yep. Okay, yeah. so Chris asked me to talk about doing smart social media online. And throughout, my, throughout the hour, we'll together, you'll see, I, I, do, I, I do have some slides to help you focus and give you something pretty to look at every once in a while. But I don't just call it social media, I call it media. Because it's what it is. It really is me. It's not just social media, it has to have more social elements to it, but it is still a form of media. So I tell you a little bit about me, as uh, my presentation doesn't move. There we go, come on. There we go. All righty. I am Maurice Coleman, as Krista mentioned. You can find me on the Twitter engine, at BaldGeekNMD. Or you can find me at my, that's my day job email address. You can feel free to contact me. I do talk to people all over the country, and yes, including Maryland libraries, about various things, which is why thank you, Krista, for inviting me on the program. 
and all my images are used with permission via Creative Commons or by right of the holder of the copyright. Thank you very much. Let me tell you a little bit about me and my background and my library's background. I've been working in libraries for the last 10 years. And before that, I was a consultant and grant maker and all sorts of things and technical assistance person in New York City. Came down to Maryland, got a job at the local library because they finally asked me to work there since I was in the library so much. And a little bit about my library. My library is a county system, 11 branches and two service vehicles. We have a blend of truly everything. My, my library system is, has almost every type of library within its borders. Very rural. Our Whiteford branch has a hitching post because, as I have learned working here, Amish folks really love their DVDs. We have branches that are primarily surrounded by farms. We have migrant farm workers who come to our northern branches. Our northern part of our county is extremely rural. We have bedroom communities of Baltimore and Washington, D.C. D.C. is about an hour and a half away, but still close enough that folks take train down to D.C. or drive every day. We are approximately two hours away, two and a half hours away from New York City, an hour away from Philadelphia, hour and a half away from Philadelphia. Some people go up there to work. It is a very pretty place. Oh, and I, I forgot about a very large military base down at the bottom. We have, as it says on the screen, Amish, rural, farm, suburban, military, and urban populations. And urban population, yes, if you have an urban issue, we have had it here at Hartford County. We're just not big. We're just sort of that thing in microcosm. We're sort of the terrarium O library. We serve a quarter of a million customers, and we were just named a Library Journal three-star library. You'll also notice down the lower right-hand corner of the screen that HCPL's Twitter handle is there. You usually find HCPL online. If you search for us using the Google engine or go to our website, hcplonline.org, you will see a whole a listing of the various things that we use here at HCPL. All right, so let's talk about some ways, before we talk about ways of doing it right, let's talk about ways of not to do it smartly. Either you are not, you don't have enough organizational commitment, or you are lacking in audience engagement. Okay, those are those two different things. You have you, people who who do not do social media well. If I take a look, or if anyone's a critical, I will take a look at what you're doing. These are the two different things that will pop up. That you'll say, "Oh, yeah, that's why they're not doing it correctly, doing it smartly." So let's talk a bit about commitment. Some of you may know the story of breakfast. How in a bacon and egg breakfast, the chicken was evolved, but the pig was committed. That can be applied to using social media for engaging and informing community. You have to choose to do it right to get good results. Just having a Google Plus presence or, oh, we have a Twitter feed, or sure, we have a Facebook page, and why we have an Instagram account. We have a good reads presence because we know we like to show people what books we're reading here at the library. It means absolutely nothing if you're not committed as a library to doing it right. So some folks doing, you know, doing it smart, is, doing it not smart, is not taking it seriously. This is a fictional conversation, an atypical conversation between me as an outside library person you know, library consultant, hey, you guys going to come in and say, hey, talk to you about stuff. And this particular, we'll call this person the director. So the director would say, we're at the cutting edge. We have a Twitter account and a Facebook page and a Google Plus page. Me, that's great. When was the last time you put posted something on it? Well, eight months ago, when we ended summer reading. We had a really successful program last year. We wanted people to know about it. 
Nothing since? No, we haven't had anything to say. You can insert me shaking my head here. To make great connections via social media, you have to be committed to taking it seriously. And by taking it seriously, that means committing to do it. Not just do it when you have something really good, but always having some sort of content. Libraries always have content. It's a matter of thinking about that content, thinking about what they do in a way that would translate well to media coverage. Also, some people think doing it is easy. Sure, I'll just crack open a, I'll just have a Google Plus account. Woohoo! All right, you have an account, slap a, a little logo on your, the front page of your website, which is also a marketing tool. Social media, media is marketing. Marketing is media. Your website is a big marketing tool. Slapping that logo up there and saying, hey, connect with us through blah, blah, blah. Like us on Facebook. Well, there's nothing there to like on Facebook that's, you know, newer than six months, then you know, the person's never go not going to engage with you. Again, it is not easy. It takes time. It takes commitment. It takes energy to take pictures, post messages, answer questions, monitor feeds, and to continually engage your audience. A way of not doing it smart is to marginalize it to let the young people in your library do it, or the new library, or that little project over there. Letting that techie librarian or the CERT person handle your entire new media presence. That is OK if your new media presence is involved and integrated with other forms of media and marketing that you do as a library. It's fine to physically have someone else do it. Maybe they're comfortable doing it. It'll give them a chance to showcase their skills, get them involved. You want to keep them around your library, or you just don't have enough warm bodies to do it, and this person, it happened to fall on this person. The person physically doing it doesn't matter their position. The whole thing has to be an integral part of what you're doing. Okay integral part of what you're doing. Just as if you were asking them to be a spokesperson, essentially the people who are doing your social media are spokespeople for your library. So think of them at, in any other way, anyone who represents your library, their guidelines, their rules, where would you have them in the planning process plan for this person? If you have an event, you have a great event, you have a fa fa insert famous author coming through town, and they're coming to your library, or a really wonderful program that's not done very often in your state, you should have that person at that program sending out beforehand, sending out informational tweets or Facebook posts or Instagram photos, you know, setting up for this event, backstage selfies, etc. If the thing is marginalized, it will not work for you, and it will be your fault. If you're the administrator, it'll be your fault because you didn't integrate it into your media plan. Oh, another way of not doing it smartly is to make it random and not targeted. You cannot just throw things out there as a, as a way of communicating with your audience. And just, you, you can't just randomly scattershot do it. You have to have some sort of plan, just like everything else. Again, even in a small library, you can have a very basic, essential media plan. How do we cover this? Who do we talk to? Who are our friends? Who do we connect with? Who shares our information? Who do we need to know? Even the smallest library, you can do this. All these things scale. You do it to the best of your ability. Yes, it, if it's you, the director, with your phone, and you're posting stuff to Instagram, and your people in your community are following you on Instagram, that works because people are seeing what you're doing. You're now. You're, they get immediacy of the interaction. Make sure it's targeted. Targeted, targeted, targeted. Just don't randomly do stuff somewhere and say, well, no one showed up. No one responded to it. Well, if your folks aren't there, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. If no one's there, guess what? They're not going to respond. And not dedicating enough time. 
Yes, that means you may have to not do one particular thing, but if this is important enough for you to think about and important enough for you to have an account, then it's important enough for you to dedicate time and resources to it. And resources, I mean, again, staff time and cash. You may have to buy something. You may have to get a sub. If you're a small library, you may have to bring someone in to work the customer service areas while someone does this. If it's important enough to bring more people to your library so you can hire that person full time, if it's all part of your media, you may have to bring someone in. If you don't dedicate enough time and you let your feed drop by the wayside, you will get dead air, which is just as bad when using newish media as it is with not quite as new media of television or radio. Because really, what happens is this, this is what people will see. This is what your folks will see. It will lead to your new media being a test pattern. Again, someone, a library that doesn't do stuff for months, especially with newish media, it was any media, it was any type of communication, but especially with this, that immediacy is sort of the, is the corner of the realm, you, you're, you're a test pattern. That's all you are. You're, you're just a test pattern. And you become background noise, and more, more importantly, become irrelevant. Your customers will disengage from the information, and that's what you don't want them to do. You don't want them to disengage from the conversation. All right, this may be a good second if anyone out there has any questions. Krista, if you can relate them to me, I'll wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This is purposeful dead air, as it were. Yes. Um, has any questions. Yeah, sometimes it's take people time. I know to type everything they want to type, so I always give a little. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you have any questions or comments, um, thoughts on what um, Mo was just saying? Um, and I, I did have a, a question, but then you said you're going to address it later, so I think I might say, yeah. you know, wait until you get to it. Just how do you figure out where users are, where to target? But I think right. you said you're going to get into that later, because I know that's an important yep. thing is, you know, well, where should we be if we're not supposed to be here? Where, right. you know, and if they didn't find our stuff there, yeah. Here's a simple question. Ask them. That's mm -hmm. two words. Ask them. That's ask them. So, do you use social media? Yes or no? Okay. What do you use? Can we have your? It's the same thing as. And I'll rehash it later. It's the same thing as if you want to capture any other data about your customers. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You ask them. You ask them. Do ask a survey. Them. Just ask right. whatever. Yep. You do a survey. You you walk. If you're in a small enough library, usually you know your customers. Uh, at most libraries, mm -hmm. you know your customers. Ask them, hey, do you use inserts, insert newer media thingy here? <laughs> or do you read this newspaper? Is that someplace that you would look for information about us? If not, where would you look mm -hmm. for information about us? Ask them, where would you look? Where would you expect to see us? Right. Where would you expect mm -hmm. to see us and where would it be nice to see us? Mm. If anything, and that's engage your users. It's all part about user engagement, and also those mm -hmm. users that are not just physical but digital users. Put something on your website. You can do a survey. You can mm -hmm. embed survey. Survey market embed a survey on your website. Right. Not all of your not all of your users are actually physically coming into your building. Right. Your users who do not physically come into your building are just as important as the users who do physically come into your building. So are we, no, any questions out there, Chris? Um, no, it doesn't look like anything urgent came in. Nothing came in while we were chatting. So I'd say let's go on okay. and see if something else catches our attention. Yep. All right, let's just make sure everyone's cool. awake out there. <laughs> That's what I always hope for. Okay, so we talked a bit about commitment to the chicken and the egg. Let's talk a bit about engagement as my computer lags behind. Let's talk a little bit about engagement. There it is. Okay. Let's talk about how to engage with the newer quote unquote media. And really the engagement is all about you creating the content. That is the biggest thing. 
you, the user, are creating the content. It's the tenant behind the newest web as opposed to someone, some big mountaintop. Here is our stuff. You can access our stuff any time. The people who are accessing stuff are also the people that are producing stuff, which can lead to different levels and different forms of engagement. But really, engagement is a key. It's always a key. It's a key to engage your customers where they are, their point of entry, their point of access, whether it's a digital customer or a physical customer. If you are too quiet, your communication will fall on deaf ears, then you won't be relevant and right now. Make sure that your social media engagement is conversational, not defensive. Sticks and stones may break your bones. But a disengaged and defensive voice will make your use of new media muddy at best and tragic at worst. It's conversational. It's not defensive. If someone doesn't like what you're doing as a library policy, and because of the, shall we say, anonymity of the internet, sometimes folks are more than likely to really not act with the best of etiquette, being anonymous. And that's fine. But you as an organization, you as a representative organization, and by the way, anyone who's posting to social media because individuals are posting it, you are representing your library, especially if you're doing it by a library account. Do not get defensive. If someone doesn't like something, if someone wants to challenge a book, etc. you do not get defensive. Everyone has their own opinion. We have methods for dealing with this, etc. You do not have to get defensive. You do not have to, don't get defensive, really. Do not be con confrontational. Be conversational. It's about having and carrying on a conversation with your customers. You also don't have to be perfect. You do not have to have four or five people edit one 140-character tweet before you send it out. You don't have to be perfect. People who use the newer media, who use user-generated media, user-generated content, understand that perfection is not, is, is certainly a goal to look for, but it is not, don't be paralyzed by it. You have to be immediate. You have to be relevant. You have to be timely. Don't have to be perfect. A month ago, a month or so ago, an airline retweeted an inappropriate picture. The person responsible for that mess up was not canned immediately. The airline spokesperson recognized that we're not all perfect, and this person made a mistake. It was a quick retweet of something. They probably didn't even get a really good look at it. They just said, oh, okay, you know, they, they mentioned our airline. Let me retweet it out and say, hey, it does sound like a really good thing. But it was a really heavily inappropriate picture. But the message in that tweet was appropriate for the airline. And the airline didn't care. I thought that was, that was rather mature. And it showed them some intelligence about using social media. You don't have to be perfect. People make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. You don't have to have the perfectly worded every single media, new, engaged, individual media blast thing. Your Facebook post, it should have relatively decent grammar. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, don't be the place that has 18 people edit a tweet. It's 140 characters. Really quick. Remember to use, back to, we talked about a little bit, the conversational. Professional voice, not personal attack. Even if you think that customer is a full-blown idiot and they're calling you and your library, you as director or you as a manager an idiot, you don't call them an idiot. You can think they're an idiot, but you don't call them an idiot. Use that professional voice all the time. The high road is always best in all communication. And remember this, even when in casual conversation with customers on Facebook, it is a public face. It is a public presence which means professional voice. Pretend you are out at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon 
and representing the library, that's exactly the way you deal with engagement in any of these types of media. You, you think you, because you never know who's going to share what. My director here at Hartford County Public Library answers questions directly for our customers on our Facebook page. She is usually the one that will, t will send out a message on Facebook if we're closed. We get snow days. And she makes a decision in a very, very, very early hour of the morning. And she will put it on our Facebook page and say, hey, we're, going, we're not going to be open today, but the library is always open at, insert our web address here, hcponline.org. You can get a book. You can download a movie. You can do all these different things. You always have access to our databases. Just be physically or not open today. But you can always access the library. And you can access our 24-hour librarian through our local Ask Us Now virtual librarian. So the library is pretty much open. You just can't get your hand on the latest DVD or book or talking book or children's toy or puppet, et cetera, that we have here at HCPL. It is always best to ignore the spammers, ignore the stalkers, and ignore the trolls that come along with all this engaged media. As I mentioned before, the anonymity of the internet is sometimes a wonderful thing to help shy people engage. It could also help creepy, pe creepy people be creepy people. So ignore all those folks. Ignore those spammers. Ignore those stalkers. Ignore those trolls who may disagree with you on every single thing. We want to challenge you. That's a stupid idea. Why did the library do that? Why are you wasting my tax money, et cetera, et cetera? In the internet arena, it is usually best to ignore the spammers, ignore the stalkers, and ignore the trolls. And unfortunately, libraries always have creeps attempting to steer you away from your mission, which, in the case of any of these type of media outlets, is to inform and engage your public. That's what you're there for. You should also encourage, not incite to riot. Encourage your customers to communicate with you. Encourage them either, as Chris and I talked about briefly, a little bit, you know, do a survey, a card, take two seconds. Hey, you connect with us on Facebook. Put it at the bottom of your receipt. This is how you connect with us. If you go home, hey, connect with us on Instagram. Look at us at this address. Look up this user. That's us. We'd like to connect with you. We want to share what we're doing to be a bigger part of your lives. We want to encourage that communication. The people who do that engagement wrong incite argument and flame wars. And they do not encourage pop, you know, proper internet behavior. So always be the model of how you want people to engage with you. That is part of that commitment to engage. When you're committed and you're engaged. If you do those two things, you will have a great social media presence. And this is a good time, Krista, if you want to take a couple of questions if there are any. Sure. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? I did have someone who did comment earlier said that they're awake. They just don't didn't have any questions at the time. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions okay, or questions or thoughts about using the 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 new media that we're using now? And, and while people are typing, it's it's strange to do these webinars. I've done them for you many years, and you just you just never know. You know, with some platforms, people are talking all the time. So at least know there's mm -hmm. someone engaged in some <laughs> platforms. It's hard to see whether people, whether or not people are talking. So you don't know if they're, mm -hmm. they're fall asleep at their keyboard. It is difficult. Yes. <laughs> um, when you were talking earlier about. Um, not having to have like 10 people decide what your tweet's going to be. I think that kind of right. made me think about what you said at the beginning about having your um, administration be engaged, involved in it, having um, their confidence that you can do this. So whoever's doing it can do it. Right. So there's a lot of like trust from above that you definitely need to have that um, whoever they've exactly. decided will be in charge, knows what they're doing, can do it right, and can do it without, you know, um, if you have that, in, you know, that trust from the administration, it give you a lot of confidence, I think, in being able to just exactly. put out there what, um, what you want to say and say it well. Because you're not, it's no different, we're going to talk about this, but I, I'm always willing to talk about this, Krista, thank you very much for that nice softball. <laughs> it is no different than engaging this way than if someone represents you at, say, the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. 
or on a list serve, or at a state conference, etc. It is no different. So libraries trust their staff to represent them in meetings at a local, state, regional, national, international level. This is just another, this is just a different place. It is mm -hmm. the exact same thing. It's that weirdness that people get, no matter what, if it's something to do with, it was an on-off button, there are completely different rules, which I just don't mm -hmm. understand. But why make more work for yourself? Yeah, just think of it as the same as those situations. And yeah, it's just in a different location. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's exactly the same. It, it, you trust mm -hmm. staff to represent you on listservs. And listservs are places where, you know, that sometimes people get into some serious, very vociferous arguments about minutia mm -hmm. on listservs. And you know, if they had those same things on, let's say, Facebook, people go, oh, my God, they don't know how to use Facebook. It's the same thing they're doing on the Alyssa. That same conversation. It's just the context of the conversation change and the venue and mm -hmm. that, the message delivery message. That's all. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like anything came in, so let's go ahead. Move on. All right. Cool. Let me show you how to smartly use new media. So you have these accounts. You don't know what to do with them. You want to effectively incorporate it into your library's online presence. Great. Here are some tips to do that. First thing you have to figure out is who are you? Know thyself. Know yourself as a library. Are you willing to commit the time, the resources, the learning curve, the money to do this at all, and more importantly, to do it right? Are you just exploring your social media, which is fine, too. If you're just exploring, that's cool. That's for, Know who you are. Know what you're doing. What do you hope to accomplish? Do you just hope to place a few things out there and see what happens? Do you want to truly use this as another method of engaging your community? You know, really have smart goals, strategic, measurable, actionable goals for using all of your media, not just social media, but figure out who you are as a system, who you are as a library, what do you want to accomplish with it, why do you want to reach the people you want to reach. And I have a, I have a question about that yeah, or a, a thought, it, it just popped in my head. This is something that um, you may have already done, I mean, it, this new social media that everyone's using now. You've. How did you used to promote your stuff before Facebook and this stuff existed? Did you have a newsletter or um, did you put a, a weekly thing in the local paper or a radio ad or whatever? The same thought process that went into doing those, you just carry over into this. It's not really something you have to reinvent necessarily. Exactly. It's like Crystal Peter has uh, my slot. I did not. I swear he didn't send me these exact <laughs> But really, you're Honestly. absolutely right, Krista. <laughs> what do you do with traditional communication? And if you really think about it, ladies and gentlemen, traditional communication, radio is relatively new. Radio is you know, 100 years old-ish. Television, full mass media, what, 60 years? It's not that old. Newspapers have been around for a little while, but what do you do with that traditional methods of communication? What, how do, the, how do, you, do you have guidelines for staff to represent the library in traditional communication methods? Television stations, television reporters, newspapers, newspaper reporters, the local light and shopper, your local advert paper. How do you have folks represent you in book talks? public presentations, media, on listservs, writing letters to the library. What do you do with traditional communication? If you already do this stuff with traditional communication, you don't need anything different. I'm about to, I'm about to say something about that in a little bit. You don't, what, do you trust your staff enough to engage in these areas without stringent guidelines? And you should trust them enough when it comes to newer social, newer media. So remember that you as a library, you are Clark Kent. You are the reporter. You generate the content. 
you are both Clark Kent. You're really both Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen. You're the reporter. You're the photographer. You're also Perry White, the editor. You're also Superman because you're a librarian. And you, you can do everything. Faster than speed and bullet, et cetera, et cetera. But you are Clark Kent. You are the reporter. You can be everywhere. And that means if you engage them properly, so can your library customers. I mentioned that author comes to town. Say James Harrison came to your town. You're backstage with James Harrison. He's sitting in your break room, taking a minute beforehand, writing his 18th book of the day. And you decide to take a little selfie with James Harrison. Hey, James Harrison, can we take a picture together? Sure. Bam. Take a selfie with James Harrison. You put that out to your customers saying, hey, we're backstage with James Patterson, who's about to speak here at the super awesome library in the middle of Nebraska. How cool is that? Your community knows you're engaged. You've brought a very famous author here. That's a, that's a check mark. The people who are there at the event are going to get excited because they may be looking right at their phone and like, oh my god, he really is here. He's right backstage. He's not just, there's not just a hand puppet of him here. Your community partners will think, wow, they got James Patterson here? Good grief. That's pretty cool. I need to get involved with that. You can get people involved and engaged without them being there. That's the coolest thing. And again, as Clark Kent with a cell phone, you can do all these things. Almost all newer media, quote unquote social media, have the ability to post and share from cellular phones. Some of them are designed to, to do that strictly from cellular phones. Send a little video. Have James Harrison do a 10 second Vine video about your library or about your town. That, how cool is that? That, that's like what those the radio stations do when they get all the people to say, you're listening to blah, 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 I'm so-and-so, and you're listening to blah, exactly. blah, blah, radio station. It's like a five-second thing. And, yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly how it is. You can broadcast that puppy forever and ever mm -hmm. and say, hey, it's James Patterson, and while you're on hold here at the blah, 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 the North Platte Public Library, you should come in and check out our latest books, including my latest book, Fill in the blank here, written with fill in the blank here person, because I come out with a book every week. There will always be something new by me on the shelves. Come join us. Something like that. So again, what do you do with non-social media? Again, how do you deal with television, radio, and newspapers? How do you deal with those reporters? Because you are the reporter. Each of those now traditional outlets, again, were new at some point. How do you as a library and how does your library staff engage with your local media? That's very important. And remember, your name is your face. Try as much as possible as a library, and this goes personally too, to have a consistent and easy to remember name as your organization's virtual news, social media, networking identity. This truly is your brand. We are HCPL online. That is our Twitter handle. That is how you can find us on the web. You just Google HCPL online, and there Hartford County Public Library pops up. Try as much as possible. Have a very consistent, easy to use thing that people can remember. Because your name is your face. That's it. Your name is your face. And a lot of times. Let's put a logo of your library up, too, and that's kind of cool. Your logo or your building, et cetera, if you're proud. You've got some sort of brand-new building, put that up. Or show pictures of it. If you get a new building, that's a great deal of new media. You can put up progress reports as if people are there watching a slow-motion video of the building of your library. Now, social media policies, in my humble opinion, are redundant if you already have a corporate communication policy. And we touched, Chris and I touched on that of saying this is how we officially communicate across all media is a great first step. You probably have some weirdly informal one, or you should have a formal one, but make it a very simple thing. Don't be a fill in the blank. As Will Wheaton says it about internet communication. Don't be an idiot. It's, don't be an idiot. OK. Now, values of idiot are different for others, but usually idiot is idiot. Here at HCPL, we have official we have an official 
organization-wide, system-wide Facebook page. But we also have for each branch, they have their own Facebook pages so they can promote what they're doing in the branch directly. That doesn't have to come through multiple lines of corporate communication. We trust that no one's going to show people inappropriately behaving or have inappropriate communication. And again, I can't emphasize this more. If you already have people who are doing this in other forms of communication, and then it's just a matter of changing the delivery method when you're dealing with these newer, newer types of engagement. And you're also ready for stuff that will come later. You don't, we, no, one, no one can predict, predict the future. If you get me at ALA, get me talking about library futurists. That, that'll, that'll set me off. Because no one can predict the future. We can prepare for the future, but we can predict some things about the future in generalities. But no one, no one can prepare for the future. No, no one can predict the future. Mm, yes. Ugh, I hate that word. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Library futurists. Futures. What the hell is that? <laughs> you couldn't tell the future was 18 months ago. Oh, yeah, the way things are moving so fast now, yeah. I was just going to say that these policies, if you write them vaguely enough, and I mean vague in a good way, that what you just said, when something new is invented next year, your policy already covers it. Right. Don't Keep say, this is how we do things in newspapers and TV, and then say, ah, now we've got to make a new one, but how we do things on Facebook. And now, No. Yeah. It's a simple, how, this is how we act when we communicate and represent the library policy. Make it as simple as possible. Make it as broad as possible. So you were asking before, Chris, a little bit about, so how do you know where are you? Where are you going to do all of this engagement? Ask your customers. If you want to reach them, ask where they are. And if they're not there, that's OK. You can still be there, but you're leading the way. Sometimes you're ahead of the curve. Sometimes you're in the middle of the pack. As, libra as libraries, we're usually ahead of the curve when it comes to these things. But really, ask your customers. Ask those digital customers. Ask those physical customers. Again, remind them, why don't you network with us? Join with us. Be with us. Here, this is how we, a new way of getting in touch with you. That's a little faster than before. You know, it's not a newsletter. We love our newsletter. But here, this is our newsletter ultra like here here's something here's a great event coming up that's now open for registration here did you know that we our story time is still open for two year olds we're doing you know a baby's love book story time or we're doing an animal story time this month in honor of shark week i don't know Mo monster week we'll do a monster short story time but you can engage your customers that way and where are you engage them are your customers on facebook if yes then you sure as heck should be on facebook So remember, if you do anything in Scattershot representing your library, it doesn't make any sense. It won't make sense. It wastes time and it wastes money. 20 years of technology training and consulting have taught this fact still eludes many people. They just go, oh, what the heck. Now it's OK. You don't have to be paralyzed by perfection, but you at least have to have a little bit of an idea of what you want to do. Just don't throw it out there. Okay, you throw it out there where your people happen to be. Where are the people you want to reach, where do they happen to be? That's where you reach them. That's where you start. If your folks are not technologically savvy, or if their bandwidth stinks and they can't get to a lot of these things, that's okay. Engage them where they are. If they're more tactile paper, then engage them tactile and paperly. It doesn't matter as long as you engage them. Who cares how? You just leave yourself in terms of newer media open to it. It's OK if your community isn't there yet. You can lead the way, show them how to use it, show them great uses for it, and do the best you can. Don't be paralyzed by perfection. Okay, some people still use email lists. Some people use you know, the good old hands. Here, here's our newsletter. Here's our bookmark to communicate. Remember, social media is about now. Social media is about now. It's not about five minutes. It's not about ten, six months ago. It's about now. It is immediate. It's meant to be a somewhat ephemeral. 
It's a browsing collection of information. It's boom, there it is. Great. Hey, that's a piece of information. Great. I may be able to use that later. Okay. Ooh, what's the sex piece of information? Ooh, that's wonderful. That's really cool. Also, as a library, you should make sure to know what uh, folks are saying about you out there. Make sure you Google your library, Google yourself, Google your staff in terms of the library, what people are saying about your library. You just never know. All right, so to recap and to review, remember, you have to have commitment and engagement. Usually it's an either or. But again, libraries who fail at social media, who do not do it smartly, fail either with not being committed enough or not being engaged enough or both. Don't be paralyzed by perfection. Remember, it has to be immediate, relevant, and timely, not perfect. Remember who you are, who you are as a library, know thyself and know that customer. Where are the people you want to reach? And that your social media policies are truly redundant. So you don't if someone asks me, do you have a social you know, do you have a copy of a social media policy? I immediately flip it back on them and say, do you have a regular corporate communication policy? Do you have a library communication policy? What's your policy? Well, it's X, Y, and Z. Well, then you have a social media communication policy. It's right there. You just said it. It's your organizational communication policy. And social media is about the now. It really is immediate. And it's a great way of engaging your customers and engaging your community and engaging other libraries. So with that, uh, it is 11. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, my time is 11.49, <laughs> so it's 10.49 Central yes. Standard. And I want to thank you. You know time zones, time. that's good. Yes, well, <laughs> I, it's doing TSA training, I have to constantly figure, okay, 2 o'clock is 1 o'clock is 3 o'clock, <laughs> who knows what. And someone yeah. in Alaska completely throws me off. Just uh, You're where? <gasps> mm -hmm. You're T minus 1 Pacific? Oh, okay, really? <laughs> so here, there... <clears throat> There's time for questions. Is there, mm -hmm. I'm done. And are there any questions? Um, yes, we do have a one that came in. Anybody has any questions, comments, thoughts, type them in. Um, if you have any cool things that you've done um, media-wise or show social media-wise that you want to share, like your um, success stories, type them in, or even maybe uh, failures. People, we can learn from those as well. You tried something and it just didn't work. Um, uh, one comment um, from someone here. We've got our Nebraska Library Commission staff watching our show from another room. Um, it says, you know your presentation is going well and people are listening when they can anticipate your next topic or slide. <laughs> that was amazing. Like, honestly, he did not send me any of this ahead of time. It just popped into my head. And, uh, honest, I, I hope people believe me, yeah. Uh, but they do have a question, too. <laughs> um, what is your opinion on Facebook advertising to promote your library? I assume they mean when you do the... Um, the pay for the ads thing, I think, is that what you're talking about? The question. I it, no, if if it gets, I think it's a good return on investment. Personally, that's my I opinion. Think it is. I've seen the it's, cost of it is yeah, yes, it's, the it's money, the ones cheap. that you pay for, yeah, yeah. Right. For compared, considering what you get, it's really cheap. Yeah, it's cheap, and Facebook has all. Faith, this is true. Facebook being a scary monster that it is. In turn, if I'm a business person, you think of this as a business person, not as a wonderful social action team as you are at the library, as a business person, how much coin am I dropping to get my information from the eyeballs of the people that are important to me? Who are the people important to me? If they can isolate the people in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I am the Lincoln Public Library. It, it, uh, it's, I'm assuming it's just Lincoln Public Library. But Lincoln City Libraries, actually, is what Lincoln we're called. Lincoln City Library. Okay, yes. Lincoln, I'm Lincoln City Library. If I know that Facebook can put my stuff in front of the eyeballs of people who identify themselves as living here in Lincoln. That's pretty cheap directed marketing. And you know with one billion, one-seventh of the world, 
on Facebook. Someone in your community is going to be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you can reach that person. That's a way of engaging that person. They can become your your Facebook ambassador. Again, I don't know price points, but I know mm -hmm. that if, if, it, if it isn't that expensive, why not do it? Mm -hmm. And it's something that you're just... It's a big fundraising thing you're doing. Yeah, saying is that even if one of your somebody is on Facebook, it's like that that ever TV commercial from back in the seventies. Anyone who remembers that, um, they tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and they tell two friends. So even on, though, so on, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> even if just some of your people or somebody sees it, and they're going to tell somebody who's not on Facebook, well, then you've gotten you know an extra level of um, right promotion. Yeah. Hey, you know the library, Lincoln City Library is doing this really cool thing. How'd you find out? I found out I'm on Facebook. Really. Yeah, what's Facebook? Okay, well. <laughs> hey, the library has a, has a workshop about that coming up this Thursday. Right. Why don't you go see? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If it would be if nice. It's, if it's, if it's, if it's, it's advertising for you. It is getting your message out. Mm -hmm. The cheaper you can do it, great, but sometimes you have to drop a little bit of cash to do it, and, some, and that return on investment I think is pretty good if you're dealing with some serious target marketing is Facebook. Mm -hmm. Look at look at all the folks who are on there. Regular, what you call mainstream company, advertising Facebook. Why? Because it works. It puts mm -hmm. it puts your stuff right in people's faces. Yeah, and you have. You, I mean, some. And I know it will vary from size of library to library, but you've got something where you've got some sort of money that's for promotion, for printing up the flyers you hand out everywhere, for printing right. up your um, newsletter, for getting that ad in the newspaper or something. Same kind of budget. Right. You can say, well, let's take you know, I'm guessing like twenty bucks of it, and we'll do a Facebook ad for right. the summer reading program that's coming up. We'll you know target, right. pick, pick a and topic, we'll pick a thing, parents. do it. Mm -hmm. It'll target, and, it yeah. tar one can target parents because Facebook will collect that data. You know how many midgets you have. The, you can target <laughs> parents or a particular age group. And if you're smart enough, I I'm guessing because of just how these things work, usually they're able to really target people. Mm -hmm. So you can have one ad for your, your babies love books, so age folks, the read to me folks. We call them read to me if you're part of the national, the read to me's. Then your next level up of elementary, then your junior high and high school, you can target people with kids of those ages to say, hey, we have this great program. Look, here is our teen program. We have these 18 different events, including you know, really a game lock-in, and mm -hmm. you can get them out of your house for a few hours during the summer. Or if you want some volunteer opportunities, we also have that to help us help make the summer reading program great. You can do all these things. And I, I'm believing you can just knowing this stuff, you could probably do some relatively fine refined targeting. Mm hmm Yep. Could definitely be done. I think what um any other have any other questions or thoughts that nothing new has come in. Um but you know, go ahead and type them in. We've got plenty of time here. Um I think one of the things that kind of wrapped this up for me, and I'm not meaning to wrap up the whole show, just that kind of is the planning part of it is that yeah. Don't go in willy nilly. Don't go in, and this is something we've said for years. Just because it's the new shiny thing, you'll go right. in, you'll get either overwhelmed, or you'll get bored, or you won't know, and your 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 presence will die, or people will get bored with it, or you'll have no idea of. Are we just, <clears throat> you know, putting out boring stuff? We need to have people that talk in house about what are we doing and you've probably already had these conversations for whatever you've promoted before these things existed so take those same conversations yeah. you already had get those same people your PR type people whoever they are <laughs> together and say okay here's the new thing that we've got to do in addition to stuff we've been doing yeah, and I always try and tell people out. yeah don't panic about it. I've got to write a blog post I've got to write a Facebook post I've got to write a newsletter article no oh. you don't you have to write one right and then and, and the send it to thing, all those places. Yeah. Right. And the Facebook thing, Krista. Really, you know, Facebook is about that. It, it's a Facebook. It's all about continuing a conversation. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're having a very short conversation on Twitter. You're having a slightly longer conversation on Facebook. But all you're doing is having a conversation. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there's always don't do not tell me you don't have stuff to talk about. 
You have some yeah. program coming up. You mm -hmm. have something coming up. Something's happening in your branch. Something's happening in your library. Something's happening mm -hmm. in your town that you're involved in. There is always stuff going on at your library. If there isn't, your mm -hmm. library is going to close, and you won't have to have a social media plan anyway because you won't be around. You always have stuff to talk about. Even a small one, you know, one room schoolhouse size library, you're still doing programs, you're still doing story times, you're still doing programs for all ages, you still have new books coming in, you still have new things coming in, that you still have newsworthy things happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just putting those things out there and letting people know about them. Mm -hmm. and I think I mean, you said it's, it's about having that conversation and getting the interaction and, and connections. And I think sometimes the pressure of that can scare people off. Why, why didn't anybody comment on my post about the summer reading program? Why didn't anybody answer when I said, hey, it's uh, a long weekend. For example, we've got Memorial Day. We can come on up. What books are you reading? And right. they get discouraged. And I think you got to realize it can be both a conversation and I don't even know what I want to call it. Just pushing it, it out there. It can be a conversation. It can be a billboard. Billboard. Yeah, yeah. That's it a good word a for it. That sometimes you won't. I mean, think about how you personally may use your own Facebook and your Twitter and whatever. Do you right. click and comment and like every single thing? No. But you no. read it. You right. read it, right? And that, I you know, it. think about that. Just because only three people liked it, probably five, ten actually saw it. Um, oh, here's a good here's a good description of it from someone in our commission staff here. They may not respond to your post, but they can't respond if you don't post. Yep. That's a nice, yes, exactly. You get it to win it. Yep. Don't be worried that they don't, that you don't get that conversation going. There may be a conversation happening about your library somewhere else, though, because you put that post out there. Yep. Yeah. And I said that just right. like someone, come, uh, 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 here, we're, we're full of analogies today. The word like we're going to beat up today. But... Someone walks into your library. They do not necessarily have to talk to a librarian. They do not necessarily talk to a circulation checkout person. They do not necessarily have to talk to a page. They don't have to talk to anybody, but they have engaged your library. Your signage is engaging with them. Mm -hmm. They find a book is engaging with them. Their self-check is engaging with them. Their computers are engaging with them. You're always engaging with them. It's not necessarily a direct open-your-mouth conversation. Sometimes it's, here, this is what we're doing. Here's our billboard. This is what we're up to. Or sometimes it's the page, your shelver slash page is the only person who talks to someone who comes in your library. That person is your library to the customer. Mm -hmm. That person should be able to represent your library. That person mm -hmm. should be able to talk about your library. And that person, can, it's like your social media. That per, It's there. You don't expect it. Maybe you get some rich different thinking and things from that interaction. You're going to have to expand your definition of engagement and communication and things to think, oh, the whole, you know, the, 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 the cliche, outside the box. <laughs> uh, the, the blow yeah. up the box. Blow up the box, yes, don't, I like that one better. Don't yes. don't, uh, yeah. Mary Hoffner, I think, has a question, Chris, at least it says she has an unanswered question in the attendee thing. Oh, she had commented earlier. She's the one that commented earlier about, um, I'm awake, I just didn't have any questions. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, well, it looks like it's twelve o'clock. <gasps> mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It looks like it's okay. eleven o'clock central. See, I can I, I I go the vague. It's at the top of the hour now. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't look. If anybody has any more urgent questions, you do have um, Maurice's uh, contact info there. If you do have any more questions about this, um, and the show has been recorded, so it will be available afterwards for you to go back and watch it all over again. Um, and we'll um, maybe, I don't know if you're going to send your slides or put a link to them, um, send a link to them to me. I can put them up as well if anyone wants to see them later and get some of those I guess quotes. I could do that. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll throw them from SlideShare or something. Yeah, wherever. That, 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 will be, that will be tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Not maybe a problem. Be a bit bat poo crazy. That's okay. <laughs> Not a problem. We'll get the recording up today, and then other things right. will be added as we get them around. Excellent. So, so that was great. Yes, thank you very much, Mo. I'm so glad to have you on. That was an awesome oh, thank you, information. Um, as you can see, obviously, I'm totally on board with you on all this, <laughs> since yes. I can apparently do your presentation too. <laughs> 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 I will not take great that from you. Great minds think yes. in light. <laughs> think alike. Yeah. There so, um, oh, can I jump back to? There we go. If people are, what, five people are still there. There's my email address. Ah, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
I have my uh, Twitter handle there. There's my email mm -hmm. address if you want to email me, et cetera. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I, I, a lot of this stuff comes from just watching and talking to libraries and seeing what we do. And I, I, I'm not lucky enough to be in charge of it here, but I do it with ALA Learning. Mm -hmm. I'm this person who manages the social networking page of our state library continuing education group. I, it's just some, it's common sense. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's just common sense. It's it, when you think it through and, and get and do it, it, it can be very much yeah. It's just something new, and people get a little nervous about it. But I think you know, putting it in the context of stuff we've been doing helps a lot. I think it's helped me, and I know it's helped when I've spoken to people about it as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It, it really is just an extension of what you're already doing. It isn't something mm -hmm. new. It's very similar to teaching someone how to do some new technological thing. It is the exact, it's a reference question. It is nothing mm -hmm. different. Just because it has a power button doesn't mean it's not a reference question. <laughs> mm -hmm. And watching people get completely flustered. Oh my God, oh my God, they do Danger Will Robinson Danger <laughs> when it comes to those types of questions. It's a whole other mm -hmm. webinar. But <laughs> yeah, that's, it, 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 you're already doing it. Yeah. You know, libraries and maker okay. spaces, we've already done this. We do this already. Libraries are truly the multifunctioning battle club of information and access to things. We always do almost everything 20 years before anyone else. We just don't call it the hippest term. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, we, okay. How many people have made stuff in their library and you know, birdhouses? No, oh, yeah, we've been oh, doing crafts yeah. and things. Yes. Right. Craft is making stuff, folks. Mm -hmm. That's a makerspace. You know, it's a makerspace. So it's just not called a makerspace, <laughs> as it were. So I'm going to stop okay. the happening because it's, it's after time. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, folks, who stood around for this whole thing. Yep. And All right. I thank you. I hope you got something out of it. Oh, yes. I'm sure. All right, I'm going to pull back uh, control <clears throat> Excuse me. All now right. to my computer so I can... Uh, Get us going on for next week. We do have a comment on there. Says so thanks, great presentation. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So that will wrap it up for this uh, week's edition of Encompass Live. Um, as I said, it has been recorded and will be up on our website. Um, eh, oh, maybe and, later and this if, afternoon. If anyone likes to, ha if anyone wants me to come out, if you're out there in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Nebraska is one of the states I've not visited. Uh -huh. I wouldn't mind <clears throat> coming out there if anyone would like to invite me out for anything. Putting that out there, I do travel mm -hmm. to speak about many different things. So, mm -hmm. yes. So right now, I'm doing this on work time because it's free. But mm -hmm. yes, I can. I, I definitely travel and come talk to you about all sorts of things. So definitely check in. That. Yeah, get Mo out to your library. All right, so that will wrap it up for today. Um, I hope you join us next week when our it is our monthly Tech Talk um, with Michael Sowers, who's the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And once a month, he comes to the show and talks about some talks about something or that is more tech related. Um, and he always usually has a, a guest on. This week he has um, was, oh Cynthia Cynthia Sajil from uh, Fremont Public Schools here in Nebraska talking about Google Apps for Education. So something for our school um, libraries out there. Um, so do sign up for that or any of our other upcoming shows. And if you are on Facebook, we um, a Facebook user, we are also on Facebook, and Compass Live is. Um, so anything that we have coming up, shows, announcements, uh, things about uh, recordings being ready, uh, being able to log in on the fly to a show that's just starting, like here's my whole announcement this morning. For uh, Mo's show, you can like us on Facebook, and you'll keep up to date on what we're doing there. And that, that will wrap it up for us this morning. Thank you very much, and we will see you uh, next time on Encompass Live.